हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू बी वाई क्लासेस दिस इज द सेक्शन ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट एंड एकोलॉजी मींस 365 फॉर यूपीएससी मींस 2023 सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो फर्स्ट सेक्शन इज क्लाइमेट चेंज अंडर दिस सेक्शन द क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड एग्रीमेंट एंड व्हाट वाज द न्यूज The COP27 was held at Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, and COP26 was held at Glasgow. And uh, what was the aim of COP27? To build previous successes, including Glasgow Climate. act of cop 26 and pave the way for the higher ambition on mitigation remember this mitigation adaptation and climate finance with focus on loss and damage the conference concluded with the release of sharmal sheikh implementation plan the targets of cop 27 set by egypt So adopting transformative adaptation agenda and providing mobilizing and delivering climate finance for developing countries avoid black backsliding on commitments and pledges ensuring a managed and just transition based on low emission and climate resilient development action to clarify support for loss and damage and shifting from pledging to implementation at scale and on time so these are the targets of cop 27 what were the outcomes of the cop 27 during the conference so first is climate target revisit and strengthen their 2023 climate target by at the end of 2023 as 2030 sorry 2030 climate targets by the end of 2023 as necessary to align with the paris agreement and mitigation finalize the details of my uh, mitigation work program to urgently scale up mitigation ambition and implementation in this decade an adaptation development of a framework for the global goal on adaptation to be undertaken through a structured approach under the glasgow sharmal sheikh work program in 2023 at cop 28 remember this new places totaling more than us dollar 230 million were made to the adaptation fund and finance launched on the article 2.1c of the paris agreement which says financial flows should be aligned with global temperature targets and loss and damage new found new funding arrangements established for assisting developing countries that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change such as the coastal countries or island countries in responding to loss and damage a transitional committee set up to make recommendations for the operationalization of the new funding arrangements at cop 28 institutional arrangements made for operationalization of the santiago network the host of the secretariat of the network will be selected by 2023 so keep this in mind and energy parties called upon to transition towards low emission energy systems and accelerate efforts towards the phase down of unabated coal power and phase out of inefficient fossil fuels subsidies and financial system reforms for transformation of financial system and its structural structures multilateral development banks such as world bank imf 
and international financial institutions have been encouraged to reform their operational model channels and instruments to address the global climate emergency and just transition a work program on just transition was launched including annual high level ministerial round tables with the first taking place at cop 28 next year and for agriculture coronivia joint work for agriculture so remember this given another four years four year lease by establishing by establishment of the four year sarmal seek joint work on implementation of climate action on agriculture and food security coronivia joint work for agriculture is a landmark decision under united nation framework uh, convention on climate change that recognizes unique potential of agriculture in tackling climate change it addresses six interrelated topics on soils nutrient use water like uh, livestock methods for assessing adaptation and socio economic and food security dimensions of climate change across agricultural sector so keep in mind technology transfer and development first joint work program of the technology executive committee and the climate technology center and network set up for 2023 2027 which will facilitate the transformational change needed to achieve the goals of the convention and the paris agreement for the first time a cop conference of party parties cover decision method uh, mentioned food rivers nature based solutions tipping points and the right to a healthy environment so these are the new initiatives launched during the cop 27 and initiatives agriculture and food international drought resilient alliance initiative on nutrition and climate change agricultural innovation mission for climate and for finance sustainable debt coalition initiative global seed against climate risk and for for forest and land mangrove alliance for climate forest and climate leaders partnership and for urban transformation low carbon transport for urban sustainability lotus initiative sustainable urban resilient for the next generation initiative so these are the initiative which were launched during cop 27 so keep this in mind and ongoing debates and issues under cop 27 no commitments to phase out all fossil fuels lack of stringent mitigation targets such as global emissions to peak as soon as possible and by 2025 finance related issues inadequate climate finance and equal access of climate finance for developing nations unclear definition of climate finance shortage of grants based finance global climate finance is skewed towards mitigation activities and full rules of procedure for article 6.2 relating to market mechanism for carbon trading remain unresolved prevalence of green washing what is green washing the practice of misleading general public into believing that companies sovereigns or civic administrators are doing more for environment than they actually are so this is the green washing concerns related to fossil fuel lobbying nationally determined contributions for 2020 uh, 2030 remain totally inadequate to fulfill the 1.5 degree pathway what was the what is the history of unfccc for the climate change as intergovernmental political issues so this initiative was launched in 1972 as environmental issues reach the global stage at the first international environmental summit in stockholm sweden 
but not specifically climate change. And in 19, uh, something 1978, concerns regarding climate change raised globally by the World Meteorological Organization. In 1972 to 1988, climate change seen as a political issue at the First World Climate Conference in 1979 and the Toronto Conference on the Changing Climate in 1988. Establishment of IPCC in 1988 investigate and report on scientific evidence on climate change and possible international responses. And in 1992, there was a global summit was held at Rio de Janeiro. There were three bodies were created in 1992, such as for climate change there was UNFCCC and for biological issues there was convention on biological diversity and for soil degradation there was UNCCD and here for climate change UNFCCC open for the signature at the earth summit in Rio de Janeiro so there were three bodies were created during earth summit and in 2005 there were was Kyoto protocol enters into force and in 2015 a successor agreement to the Kyoto protocol the Paris agreement is adopted so this is the history of climate change UNFCCC okay next is key aspects of the Paris agreement what were the initiatives launched during Paris agreement long term goal to limit global temperature increase to well below 2 degrees celsius above pre-industrial levels and pursue efforts to keep it below 1.5 degrees Celsius and global peaking and climate neutrality reach global net zero emissions by 2050 mitigation there is binding commitments by all parties to prepare communicate and maintain a nationally determined contribution to achieve above goals which will be updated every five years so keep this in mind that Paris Agreement is a binding operation on or US UNFCCC is a binding operation for the climate change and global Stockholm global stock take to take place in 2023 and every five years thereafter to assess collective progress towards achieving the pro, uh, purpose of the agreement. And voluntary cooperation or market and non-market based approaches in article 6 addressing loss and damage and framework for finance technology and capacity building support includes the green climate fund and transparency implementation and compliance framework to facilitate implementation and promote compliance in a non uh, adversarial and non punitive manner so keep this in mind what is what is the way forward for suggesting a good climate change initiatives launched during the COP27 at Glasgow oh COP27 at Sarmal Sheikh Egypt so enhancing mitigation targets through rapid deep and sustained re, uh, reductions in global greenhouse gas emissions of 43% by 2030 relative to 2019 level gradual phase out of all fossil fuels scaling climate finance through contribution from developed nations proactive environment of private sector multilateral finance institutions promote just energy transition partnerships to finance the energy transitions of emerging economies establishing 
clear source and commitments for funding loss and damage through dialogue and adopting clear definitions for climate finance reflecting the principle of common but differentiated responsibility so remember this setting standards to qualify and measure emission reductions to reduce instances of greenwashing and related development breakthrough agenda sets priorities so signatories to breakthrough agenda have mapped out priority actions to be delivered by cop28 climate summit to help make clean technologies cheaper and cleaner breakthrough agenda was launched at cop26 by a coalition of about 45 world leaders including india to provide a framework for countries there was objective to provide a framework for countries business and civil society to strengthen their actions in key emitting sectors priority actions aim to speed up decarbonization under five key sectors of power road transport steel hydrogen and agriculture these priority actions are being supported by the various initiatives including climate investment funds largest multilateral climate fund focused on transformational climate innovation in 72 middle and low income countries including india mission possible partnership and alliance of leading climate organizations our next is india and cop 27 at india raised several concerns regarding climate equity during conference of parties 27 that is initiatives negotiations between india and climate change interests early and mb ambitious global climate action with enough policy space and carbon space for domestic development what was the position continue support to international negotiations under unfccc and awareness about its responsibilities belief in foundational principles of equity and common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities a role in shaping negotiations leads as a role model represents interest of developing nations provides alternative channels to fight climate change initiatives launched by india during cop 27 in our life for environment campaign lifetime campaign lead it means leadership for industry transition summit 2022 etc and concerns regarding cop 27 by india that gap in operationalizing the principles of equity and climate just and cbdr rc developing countries should be provided with a great a greater share of the remaining carbon budget just transition to cleaner sources of energy should give the consideration to developmental needs of the developing countries practices such as carbon border adjustment mechanisms So keep this in mind would result in market distortion and aggravate the trust deficit amongst parties in extending the scope of mitigation to agriculture under coronavia joint work on agriculture will burden small farmers selective signaling singling out to out of sources of emissions such as coal global oil and gas emissions are 25% higher than coal emissions an unclear definition of climate finance a shortage of climate finance india needs tens of trillions of dollars by 2050 to achieve net zero status by 2070 so this is the target of india to reduce net zero emissions by 
what is the way forward for indian perspectives enhanced mitigation efforts from developed countries just transition for developing countries requires low carbon development and independence in their choice of energy mix and in achieving the sustainable development goals need for a united solidarity solidarity response by developing countries long term goal of phasing out all fossil fuels not short term goal defining and implementing article 2.1 same making finance flows consistent for the developing countries so keep this in mind scaling up climate finance by delivering on the promise of your dollar 100 billion under green climate fund and setting up a target of 1 trillion climate finance per year and next is the loss and damage transition committee on operationalization of loss and damage fund established in cop 27 held its first meeting in luxor egypt egypt in 2023 what is the loss and damage to the negative consequences that raise from unavoidable risks of climate change also includes non economic losses such as incalculable toll of losing family members disappearance of cl- uh, cultures and ways of living loss and damage emerged in climate negotiations when warsaw international mechanism for loss and damage was established at the cop 29 uh, cop 19 in 2013 and why need of loss and damage finance required no systematic and predictable funding exist for developing countries already facing loss and damage many communities are experiencing climate impacts that are impossible to adopt it loss and damage disproportionately affects vulnerable groups no funding structures exist to address permanent loss from slow onset events such as loss of productive crop land through desertification sea level rise and loss and damage from climate change impacts will continue even even if emissions are controlled keep this in mind what are the constraints in mobilizing loss and damage fund funds disagreements regarding source of funds developed countries like usa want loss and damage finance to flow through existing financial instruments and do not support certain creation of a new facility developing countries like india argue for providing support financial technical capacity building based on historical emissions current funding is inadequate to address the full scale and scope of problem formal mechanism for funding not been finalized yet and we forwards emphasizing on finalizing of the all the key issues such as operationalizing of funding transfer of funds in a transparency way independent authority to audit for the usage of the fund international collaboration to address the disagreements between members alternative financial mechanisms like insurance cover private sector finance etc to the supplementary function uh, financing and next the 50 years of stockholm conference has been cleared so recently stockholm plus 50 meeting was held at stockholm sweden to commemorate the 50 years since the 1972 united nation conference on human environment also known as the in stockholm conference which met the environment a pressing global issue for the first time so what is the stockholm plus 50 recommendation for actionable agenda so placing human well being at the center of a healthy planet and prosperity for all recognizing and implementing the right to a clean healthy and sustainable environment and adopting system wide changes in our current economic system accelerate transformations of high impact sectors 
help developing countries tackle environmental challenges by providing access and support for digital and technological solutions so this is the these are the recommendations of stockholm plus 50 and stockholm conference this is the static portion so you can pause the video and read read this okay next is outcome and success of stockholm conference established united nation environment program and made multilateral governance of planetary concerns main, uh, mainstream led to more than 500 multilateral environmental agreements being adopted in the last 50 years such as vienna conventions sites stockholm convention rotterdam convention bonn convention convention for the prevention of pollution for ships merpol etc the beginning of the contemporary environmental era most of the conventions related to planetary crisis like the unfccc unccd and cbd were created during the earth summit and originated in the stock stock home declaration 1992 so keep this in mind led to identification of a theme of sustainable development in 1992 un conference on environment and development the earth summit held in rio de janeiro brazil established by established key principles like precautionary principle in vienna, vienna convention and polluter pays principle opened the door to broader participation in sustainable development arena by welcoming non governmental organizations indigenous peoples scientific community and the private sector etc the start of environmental diplomacy and establishment of national environmental ministries in india ministry of environment and forest was set up in 1985 keep this in mind the next section section is india and climate action in india targets it is indc targets under the paris agreement 45% reduction in emission intensity by 2030 from 2005 level 50% all electricity to be generated by non fossil fuel energy by 2030 additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion ton of coal uh, carbon dioxide equivalent by 2030 through free and tree and forest cover so keep this in mind next is current emissions the contribution to uh, historical cumulative, uh, cumulative co2 emissions about 3% 2021 share of global emissions is to that 7.5% third highest globally after china and usa per capita carbon emissions are still very low at 1.3 tons per person per year in 2021 compared to the united states 4.0 tons the achievements or progress of india in the climate change achieved emission reduction of 21% to 2005 levels the green shift report by mop and ng achieved 43% of installed electricity capacity from non fossil fuels sources non fossil energy capacity is to that about 180 gigawatt in 2023 total forest and tree cover makes up 24.62% of the total green uh, geographical area of india current run rate of 1.922 gtco2 emission in additional carbon sink by 2023 so remember this these facts next is panchamrit at co 26 glasgow there was achievement of tar- achievement target of net zero by to- 2070 increase non fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatt by 2030 meet 50% energy requirements from renewable sources by 2030 reduce carbon intensity of economy by less than 45% 2030 reduce total 
projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons till 2030 now it is a 2.5 to 3 billion 2023 so keep this in mind the panchamrit announced men at the COP 26 glasgow what are the schemes or policies or initiatives launched by the government of india to tackle the climate change so national action plan on climate change national adaptation fund on climate change and climate change action program what are the policies national wind solar hydric, uh, hybrid policy national biofuel policy national offshore wind energy policy green hydrogen or green ammonia policy and schemes are kusum for solar rooftop program ultra mega solar parks perform achieved and trade scheme carbon tax ujala scheme ujala came india scheme for electric vehicles and next is the tax concessions and incentivizes such as the production linked incentive scheme for renewable sector net zero target by 2030 by indian railways international solar alliance coalition for disaster resilience infrastructure green grid initiatives one sun one world one grid project and life for environment mission campaign so these are the initiatives launched by the government next is the india's updated nationally determined contribution india recently submitted its updated nationally determined contributions to the united nations framework convention on climate change what was the context updated ndcs are manifestations of the parties uh, paris agreements ratcheting mechanisms wherein countries must revise their pledges to to be more ambitious every five years so every five years revive the nationally determined contributions by every countries they are submitted every five years to the UNFCCC secretariat and India's NDCs India's NDCs first submitted to the UNFCCC in 2015 during Paris agreement 2015 NDC comprised eight goals in which three of which have quantitative targets up to 2030 with respect to reduction of emissions intensity increasing the share of non-fossil fuels in installed electricity capacity and creation of additional carbon sink through additional forest and tree cover so these are the three quantitative targets out of eight goals in india updated nationally determined contributions it represents the framework for India's transition to clean, cleaner energy for the period 2021-2030 for 10 years. New NDCs have updated two of the three quantitative targets of 2015 NDCs related to emissions intensity and share of non-fossil fuels in installed electricity capacity. What are the significance of India's updated NDCs? help India pressure in low emissions growth pathways, decoupling of India's economic growth from greenhouse gas emissions, enabling overall increase in green jobs such as in renewable energy and clean energy industries, a step towards achieving India's long-term goal of reaching net zero by 2070 and translating Panchamrit announced at COP26 into enhanced climate targets. And enhancing India's contributions towards global response to climate change under the Paris Agreement. These are the importance of NDCs. And what are the challenges in achieving climate targets? Pace of decommissioning coal-based plants does not match the pace of rise of renewable energy. 
एंड कंस्टेंट्स इन इंक्रीजिंग शेयर ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी डायलूशन ऑफ पंचामृत कमिटमेंट्स इन एन डी सीज एंड फाइनेंशियल कंस्टेंट्स विच आर वन ट्रिलियन नीडेड बाई डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज एंड लाइक ऑफ सेक्टर स्पेसिफिक मिटिगेशन ऑब्लिगेशन और एक्शन इशूज इन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द क्लाइमेट मिशन लाइक इंटरमिनिस्टेरियल फॉर कोआर्डिनेशन लैक ऑफ टेक्निकल एक्सपर्टीज एंड प्रोजेक्ट क्लियरेंस डिलेज एंड दिस इज द इंडियाज नेशन डिटरमाइंड कंट्रीब्यूशन यू कैन पोस्ट द वीडियो एंड लुक थॉर्ली ओके सो रिमेंबर these updated indices which is important and previous indices you can compare this and what are the targets of 2030 previous indices 2015 and updated indices 2022 such as reduce the emissions intensity of its gdp by 33 to 35% earlier in 2020 earlier in 2020 Twenty thirty from two thousand five level, but recently forty five percent. I mentioned uh, estimated reduction of twenty one percent to our two thousand five levels. Keep this in mind. And earlier, the cumulative electric electric power installed capacity from non fossil fuel based energy from forty percent now fifty percent and forty three percent achieved. Additional carbon sink through additional fossil and Uh, forest and tree cover earlier 2.5 percent to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. Now it is equivalent. The current rate of 1.9 to 2 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. So keep this in mind. Okay. So such quality. This is qualitative targets. These are quantitative targets, and this is the qualitative targets so keep this in mind okay remember these thing these facts what are the way forward the provisions of new additional financial resources such as as well as transfer of technology by developed countries under unfccc and the paris agreement and gradually phasing out coal by early retirement of the existing coal capacity and reduction of the coal projects pipeline and developing a mitigation strategy for net zero goals need of net negative emissions commitments from developed nations to vacate the carbon space in 2050 for developing countries focusing on energy intensive intensive sectors for emission reduction okay next is the india's long term low emission development strategy or lt leds what is the context india has submitted its long term low emission development strategy to the united nation framework convention on climate change key considerations for india's approach of lt leds india's historical contribution to cumulative global greenhouse gas emissions being must minuscule india has significant energy needs for development india is committed to pursuing low carbon strategies for development and is actively pursuing them as per the national circumstances india needs to build climate change resilience keep this in mind what is ltled the steps to achieve net zero by 2070 and rest on seven key transitions to low carbon development pathways parties to the nfccc agreed to formulate and communicate long term low greenhouse gas emissions development strategies under article 4.19 of the paris agreement and informed by the vision of life for environment next is india's long term low em- emission development strategies ltleds what is the element and what is the current targets and 
policies the low carbon development of electricity systems consistent with development in ndc target 50% of non fossil capacity by 2030 a three fold rise in nuclear installed capacity by 2032 a renewable, renewable purchase obligations green energy corridors so second point you can remember that this is it is a new point okay, that a three fold rise in nuclear installed capacity by 2032 remember this integrated efficient inclusive low carbon transport systems 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2025 indian railways to become net zero by 2030 and leaf frogging directly to bharat stage four emissions bharat stage six emissions from bs4 pm gati shakti in adaptation in urban design energy and material efficiency in buildings and sustainable urbanization in this national urban policy framework eco nivas samhita indian coal india cooling action plan national mission on sustainable habitat etc plastic waste management amendment rules 2021 an economy economy wide decoupling of growth from emissions and development of an efficient innovative low emission industrial system national missions for enhanced energy efficiency standards and labeling scheme and energy efficiency financing platform national policy on biofuels national green hydrogen missions etc and co2 removal and related engineering solutions under this the research and development and building human and infrastructure capacity to evolve technologies and methodologically methodologies like carbon capture utilization and storage enhancing forest and vegetation cover consistent with socio economic and ecological considerations under this the ndc targets to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of co2 equivalent by 2030 voluntary commitment to restore 26 million hectare degraded land by 2030 according to the unccd national mission for a green india national afforestation program nagar van yojana a national red plus strategy by 2018 and economic and financial aspects of low carbon development business responsibility and sustainable report by sebi inclusion of renewable energy projects under priority sector lending norms sustainable financial finance group established by the rbi and next decarbonization of indian economy what is the context energy transition advisory committee formed under the direction of the ministry of petroleum and natural gas has compiled a report the green shift the low carbon transition of india oil and gas sector what is the decarbonization the term for removal or or reduction of carbon dioxide or gsg greenhouse gas emissions input into the atmosphere and decarbonization involves two aspects reducing greenhouse gas emissions and absorbing carbon from atmosphere and need for the decarbonization for combating global warming earth is expected to 2.7 to 3.5 degree celsius warmer than pre industrial temperature levels by the end of this century managing climate change risks india ranked 7th in the world's most affected countries by climate change in 2019 and achieving net zero commitments amidst an increase in energy demand what is the drivers of decarbonization moving 
towards renewable energy resource exploration energy efficiency and energy affordability and technology and innovation energy transition in industry electric transportation national carbon market and alternative fuels and waste to fuel economy these are the drivers of decarbonization which carbon can be curbed from the emissions of the fossil fuels and other emitted materials and what are the challenges in decarbonization high dependence on conventional fuel countries uh, contributes around 60% technological limitations in important fields like low carbon technology CCUS lack of policy measures and monitoring standards for tracking decarbonization of different sectors and funding challenges shortage of green finance higher perceived risk of green investments and lack of bankable pipeline projects for investors and limited availability of domestic resources like reserves of rare earth elements critical for electric vehicles and infrastructure challenges in shifting to low carbon emiss uh, low carbon economy for example shifting to electrical vehicles would require expand expansion of charging infrastructure switching to renewable energy need development of energy storage systems etc and skill gap in labor force as shift towards a low carbon economy will lead to job transition particularly in industries heavily resilient on fossil fuels limited international collaboration and cooperation and what are the way forwards for decarbonization emission social and economic changes needed for effective decarbonization such as catalyzed catalyzing effective capital real reallocation and new financing structures in capital capital reallocation under this the scaling of climate finance 3.5 trillion dollar increase in spending on low emission assets versus today develop new financial instruments special purpose special purpose vehicles for setting up low emission assets long term purchase agreements pricing externalities to rebalance incentives policies to encourage capital spending in emission reduction projects funding the repurposing or decarbon or de commissioning of the redundant uh, redundant assets okay so keep this in mind and next is managing demand shifts and near term unit cost increases under demand shift management the building transparency around climate risk and opportunities and climate stress test for factoring risk in investment identifying measures to manage cost increase or distribute the impact of cost increase across value chain and incentives for making low emission tech cost competitive for lift demand for low emission tech to achieve economies of scale next is establishing compensating mechanisms to address socio economies impact and compensation mechanism under compensation mechanisms there is supporting economic development and diversification Ex uh, expediting the timeline for us dollar 100 billion climate support fund reskilling and redevelopment of workers under this the retaining workers for right skills needed in a low carbon economy 
instituting support for displaced workers options for adding displaced workers for example income support measures and subsidies and what is the institutional setup and changes recommended for indian economy decarbonization creating an administrative setup at the ministry level around energy providing ministries consisting of ministry of png ministry of new and renewable energy and ministry of power and coal ministry at the core and tasking bureau of energy efficiency with validating and consolidating all data related to the energy transition and niti ayog can provide modeling ex, uh, expertise and make projections for the future which are essential for planning monitoring forces corrections etc creating an expert group on energy transition to provide inputs comprising industry representatives from different sectors both energy demand and supply tie up all liaison with international organizations to constantly scan and note the relevant developments taking the place globally and what is next the sector specific decarbonization in india first is in power sector share in india's emissions around 34% since 2019 schemes related to power sector renewable energy mission national green hydrogen mission national bioenergy program and for renewable purchase obligations a national mission for enhanced energy efficiency eased term terms for open access to buy green energy green term ahead market to provide in has i mean news for sale of renewable energy what are the constraints technological limitations in energy storage systems high efficiency power transmission carbon sequestration etc import deficiency uh, dependency for necessary equip, uh, equipment such as solar panels lithium ion batteries from china and intermittent nature of the renewable energy and low consumption what is the way forward to reform in the power sector reducing per unit cost of renewable energy invest in research and development for development of clean, clean energy technologies creation of domestic capabilities across the entire clean energy value chain through initiatives like production linked incentive and it will also be included the the power sector under the solar panel and lithium ion batteries manufacturing in india under atmanirbhar bharat and decarbonization initiative in transportation the schemes like fame india for electric vehicles sustainable alternative towards affordable transportation that is satat implementation of bharat stage 6 leap frogging from bs4 emission standards mission electrification by the railways by 2030 adoption of the bio based sustainable aviation fuel and vehicle scrapage policy what are the constraints and share of transportation emissions in india around 9% what are the constraints regarding these schemes high cost involved in deploy uh, deployment of new technologies and infrastructure hesitancy among consumers to adopt low carbon transportation such as electric vehicles due to high cost safety concerns and low adopt a low adoption and penetration of sustainable quality of public transportation high emission for aviation sector so keep this in mind what is the way forward 
to reform in the transportation sector to reducing the carbon emissions that model shifted towards public and less polluting modes of transport private part uh, public private partnership models to build compatible infrastructure setting targets for aviation sector for example india will start participating in international civil aviation organizations carbon offsetting and reduction scheme for international aviation and long term aspiration aspirational goals from 2027 and what is the industrial contribution in emissions that is 20 around 28% schemes related to the industry perform achieve and trade part scheme national solar mission and promotion of adoption of low carbon technologies by industries developed green steel what are the constraints alternative sources of energy are less reliable in comparison to fossil fuels requires an adequate amount of funding for transition to low carbon technologies what are what are way forward improve energy and resource efficiency with the first to increase the use of natural and bio based materials and promote fossil switching and electrification in manufacturing as feasible and viable keep this in mind and next is lack of in constraints lack of research and development lack of monitoring mechanisms high emissions from linear economy and way forward is enhance material efficiency and recycling strengthening the circular economy remember this the circular economy is important for reducing the carbon emissions and next section is the agriculture agricultural emissions participating in carbon emissions that is more than 8% what are the schemes related to the agricultural reduction initiatives agricultural emissions reduction initiatives that is pradhan mantri kisan urja suraksha evam uthan mahabhiyan that is kusum scheme adoption of practices like system of zero budget farming rice intensification etc what are the constraints dependence over transition traditional fuel and technologies like diesel operated pumps requires adequate capital for just transition dominated by marginal farmers over waste management and way forward the financial support to marginal farmers should be provided A small clusters of renewable energy generation with the help of cooperatives and for building building contributed in india's emissions around 4.5% and what are the schemes or initiatives by the government eco nivas samita energy conservation building code for residences energy conservation and sustainable building code green rating for integrated habitat assessment grey high scheme and building energy efficiency labeling and national mission on sustainable habitat what are the constraints over implementation of norms climate responsive urban planning and building practices require large investments in innovation and low carbon technologies and high cost of retrofitting current infrastructure so these are the constraints and what are the way forward mainstreaming adaptation measures in the built environment and urban systems and promote climate responsive and resilient building design construction etc a use of energy efficient efficient heating ventilation and air conditioning systems remember these areas which are contributed in the india's carbon emissions and next is decentralization of climate 
action in India. What is the context? Idea has been mooted to set up India's International Conference of Parties India's Scope, a forum similar to GST Council to generate national consensus on India's climate goals and means to achieve them. India COP can promote a spirit of cooperative and competitive federalism with each state or union territory committing bolst uh, bolder actions towards net zero. And net zero, what is net zero? To a state in which greenhouse gas emissions going into atmosphere are balanced by removal of removal out of atmosphere. What are the significance of D? decentralization of climate action in india though a project is conceived financed and implemented by central agencies site specific mobilization of resources requires active cooperation of states or union territories in constitutional provisions legislations of parliament enable states union territories or local level governments to have an influence on matters like land electricity pollution control etc a local communities lack effective wise in prioritizing decision making and implementing the climate actions that most affect them and decentralization can innovate customized approaches for adopt adoption of climate goals in line with the socio-economic and cultural sensitivities of region. Building local resilience will help to anticipate climate risk and hazards, absorb shocks and reshape and transform development pathways in longer term. In proximity to community makes local governments most accessible authority when disaster risk strikes can coordinate effective responses and ensure people's participation and what are the challenges faced by state or unitary or local governments in climate action initiatives the shortage of climate finance that is easily accessible at the local level limited scientific knowledge about climate monitoring and technical institutional capacity to build concrete strategies to guide decision making. Finances and resources are focused more on primary things such as health care, governance, etc. Lack of cooperation between different players of government and climate change has not been declared as a major emergence or concerns. Okay. And what are the way forward? The combining spontaneous based on indigenous knowledge and planned based on scientific thought adaption strategies enabling access to international international funds and supports capacity building in terms of human resources skills knowledge planning capabilities of individual and communities fast track implementation of climate related actions as part of the development planning at sub national levels clarity about the responsibilities of governments at different levels develop reliable down scaled climate models to predict district and block specific climate impacts and so so these are the way forward to reform in the decentralization of the climate action so this is uh, this needs to be very effectively that government of india needs to cooperate with the state and local government that to reducing the emissions from the climate action with the cooperative and competitive federalism by the Niti Aayog launched for the climate action plan with the state and local bodies. These are the examples of locally led initiatives. You can pause the video and 
रीड दीज एग्जाम्पल्स अबाउट सिक्किम हिमाचल प्रदेश जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड केरला ओके एंड नेक्स्ट इज एफर्ट्स प्रमोटिंग द डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन सो हियर दीज आर नॉट मच इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर अपकमिंग मीन्स एग्जामिनेशन बट दीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट बट यू कैन नॉट रिमेंबर ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो यू कैन गो थ्रू वन और टू टाइम्स थ्रू पोस्ट द वीडियो एंड यू कैन रिमेंबर दिस और रीड वन टू टू टाइम्स ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज दो वॉट इज द कंटेक्सट द क्लाइमेट जस्टिस एज द कंसेप्ट फीचर्स इन सेशंस ऑफ टू टॉप ग्लोबल इंस्टीट्यूशन द यूनाइटेड नेशंस जनरल असम्बली एंड द यूरोपियन कोर्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स तो वाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ क्लाइमेट जस्टिस नॉलेज इज द सोशल डायमेंशन ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज विच अफेक्ट्स पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट क्लासेस रेसेस जेंडर जियोग्राफीज एंड जनरेशन अन इक्वली एंड हाईलाइट्स कंसर्न ऑफ वनरेबल कंट्रीज एंड कम्युनिटीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल कंट्रीज इन द ग्लोबल साउथ एंड कम्युनिटीज सच एज वुमेन एल्डरली चिल्ड्रेन एट्सेट्रा शेयर्स ऑफ वर्ल्डन्स ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज बाई हेल्पिंग वनरेबल कंट्रीज एंड पीपल हु आर ऑफन अनेबल एंड एल इक्विप्ड टू द रेस्पॉन्ड रिकोगनाइज लोकल सोल्यूशन सच एज इंडिजीनियस प्रैक्टिस प्रमोट्स कल्चर ऑफ पोलूटर से पेज प्रिंसिपल रिकोगनाइज जेंडर इक्विटी इन क्लाइमेट जस्टिस एंड वॉट आर द चैलेंजेस ग्रेजुअल डायलूशन ऑफ कॉमन बट डिफ्रेंशिएट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी बाई डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज and vulnerable communities like the technical and institutional capacity to develop implement climate policies and programs so keep this in mind lack of access to accurate information about climate change and its impact climate action of major developed countries can incompatible with the goals of the paris agreement globalization and neoliberalism can perpetuate in inequality and what is the climate justice so these are the pillars of climate justice natural climate solutions social racial and environmental justice climate education and engagement community resilience and adaptation just transition and indigenous climate action and what are the evolution of idea of climate justice since 1987 brand land report our common future In 1992 NFCCC include polluter pays principal and CBDRRC 2009 COP15 was held at Copenhagen and COP21 Paris agreement in 2015 held to strengthen the Kyoto protocol with a bottom up system where energy con- energy country sets their own targets so keep this in mind a way to achieve the climate justice global acceleration of environmental runoff law to protect and fulfill the right to a clean and healthy environment sustainable development a strong national legal frameworks for equitable and sustainable management of natural resources and accessible justice and human rights institutions for vulnerable excluded and marginalized people and communities participation in decision making gender equality and community actions where women and indigenous people can act as powerful agents of change and climate justice advocates and secure equitable distribution of funds to ensure that the global south has access to opportunities to participate on equal footing towards true climate justice what are the initiatives in india to resolve the climate justice concerns protecting rights of indigenous community that is pesa act 1996 forest rights act 2006 sustainable agriculture national innovations in climate resilient uh, agriculture and cl- uh, commitment to climate action goal of net zero by 2070 accessible renewable energy one sun one world one grid 
and International Solar Alliance. So these are the initiatives launched by the Government of India. And carbon inequality. What is the context? The phenomena of the highly unequal distribution of carbon emissions throughout the world is increasing. And current situation of the carbon inequality. World's richest people emit unsustainable amounts of carbon and unlike ordinary people 50% to 70% per, uh, of their emissions result from their investments of according to our stand report and the bottom 50% household contribute 12% of the global total greenhouse gas emissions whereas the top 1% emit contribute 17% of the total emission gap report 2022 so remember these facts and types of inequalities carbon inequalities between nations and carbon inequality within nation within uh, between nations a small number of developed countries are responsible for sustainably higher share of the CO2 emitted globally and within nations carbon emissions of higher income groups are significantly higher carbon or CO2 emitted. What are the significance of addressing climate inequality? Account for historical responsibilities, standard climate measures lead to social and economic inequality, inequity. Designing effective and targeted climate policies and making productive use of public investment. So keep this in mind. What are the way forward for reducing the climate inequality? Proper tracking of individual emissions within countries. And policy instruments targeting investments in polluting and fossil activities, scaling up public investments in low carbon energy, production infrastructures, transport and energy efficiency, etc. Significant resources in production and collection of climate inequality statistics in all countries, a windfall taxes on excess profits in polluting industri uh, industries could help for fund low carbon investment developing countries also need to reform their domestic ta tax system to redistribute more from the wealthy. So keep this in mind. And next section is climate change impacts. Impact on women. What is the context? UN figures estimate that 80% of people displaced by climate change are women. 80% climate change uh, displaced person women rather than 20% are men. Disproportionate impacts of climate change more dependent on livelihood threatened by climate change. Poor excesses to finance to cover weather related losses, adaptation technologies, education etc. A limited mobility and heightened vulnerability and exposure to climate change related extreme weather events due to societal norms and lack of gender sensitive disaster planning and a heightened burden of household responsibilities and increased violence against women and role of climate action ensuring climate justice by including needs perspectives and ideas of women in climate action utilizing women's traditional knowledge and experience related to natural resource management in climate action strategies, ensuring sustainable agriculture and food security with the help of large women agriculture labor force. Women act as first responders in community responses to natural disasters and contribute to post-recovery needs of their families, advancing climate investments through grassroots women's organizations. And what are the way forward to reduce the climate inequality that is integrate gender perspectives into mitigation and adaptation actions by making climate action policies gender aware including local women in their research gender sensitive accounting for gender in project design and gender response positively impacts impacting local women and gender transformative contributing to 
a more equity society so keep this in mind next is impact on children of the climate inequality the current situation estimated 1 in 7 children globally are exposed to at least five major climate and environmental hazards in 2020 nearly 10 million children were displaced due to weather related events india is among four south asian countries where children are at extremely high risk of impacts of the climate risks what are the disproportionate impacts of climate change children are physically physiologically and emotionally more vulnerable than adults to climate and environmental shocks issues related to children displaced by climate change greater risk of maltreatment in the form of abuse trafficking exploitation etc and more likely to lose access to essential services such as health nutrition education etc and social protections against child labor child marriage etc climate policies often does not address the specific risk that children face because of climate change any deprivation as a result of climate and environmental degradation at a young age can result in a lifetime of lost opportunity and international initiatives to reduce the climate inequality unicef the international organization for mitigation migration georgetown university and united nations university recently launched guiding principles for children on the move in the context of climate change and children's climate risk index introduced by the unicef next is way forward that adopting a rights based approach to empower and protect children based on international conventions like the convention on the rights of the child understand children's vulnerability through group level assessments provide appropriate guidance to children in exercising their rights through imparting awareness and encouraging their participation in national regional and international level decision making and investing heavily in adaptation and resilience of social services based on a careful assessment of children's exposure and vulnerability to climate change so keep this in mind and impact of impact on human capital of the climate inequality what are the impacts adversely impacts socio economic development by interrupting schooling health services and leading to forced displacement and health impacts like malnutrition respiratory diseases injuries heart related illness etc adverse impact on physical and mental well being destruction of livelihoods in climate impact sectors like agriculture and tourism traps vulnerable population into poverty and increases the financial pressure and climate mitigation and adaptation efforts like transition to clean energy can create skill gap and cause job losses may lead to conflicts civil war like situations and what are the constraints in tracking impacts of climate change no specific parameters to assess climate change impacts on the human capital across the globe marginalized sections such as indigenous people children etc face greater impacts but are least protected social protection systems are not prepared to adopt to climate change adaptation and mitigation are at slow pace due to the slow transition of new technologies and financial limitations of develop, developing nations to overcome socio economic impact of climate induced loss and damage so keep this in mind what are the way forward to reduce the climate action to reduce the climate inequality or impact of climate change updating education policies to encourage behavior change empower people and reskill and upskill workers for low carbon economy and climate resilient development 
and assessing workforce vulnerabilities and promoting adaptive social protection services. Investments in the rehabilitation and equi equipment of equipping of essential services such as health care facilities and developing financial mechanisms to assist marginalized sections in adapting to climate change and participating in energy transition. So keep this in mind. Next is the Arctic region. What is the significance of Arctic? And here you can see here that Arctic region is the surrounding Russia, USA, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Finland, Sweden. So these are the surrounding countries of the Arctic region in the North Pole of the globe and significance of Arctic an area of geopolitical, geoeconomic and geoecological interests. Climate change causing melting of ice making region more accessible for economic exploitation, oil and gas reserves, metals and minerals. Possibilities to open northern sea routes as a new trade route helps circulate world's ocean currents characterized as world's climate change barometers and what is the india and related india and arctic related facts since 2007 india has an arctic research program with several exped, uh, expeditions undertaken till date for extraction or finding the natural resources in the arctic region unveiled its first arctic policy india is one of the observers in arctic council and set up the also set up uh, stations for research and development in the arctic region what are the impacts of climate change on arctic arctic amplification arctic is heating up more than two times as fast as the rest of the world melting a melting sea ice 2022 sea ice extending well below long term average it is also impacting albedo of region thereby in inducing the melting changing chemistry of western region of the arctic ocean acidity levels increasing three to four times faster than ocean water cells were and these are the this is the arctic amplification the dynamics of global warming so this is the process you can pause the video and remember and go through this diagram okay next is impact of declining arctic sea ice cover so what are the impacts while decreasing the ice cover from the I, uh, arctic region adverse impact on regional and global weather due to interference with ocean circulation ice albedo feedback causing further melting of ice boom in phytoplankton driven production of organic matter in oceans life threatening problems for the diverse population of sea countries uh, creatures especially organized organisms like oysters and corals okay and next is what is the way forward minimum intervention in arctic ecosystem for resource exploitation sustainable tourism and promoting global cooperation in implementing international commitments such as paris climate deal so keep this in mind next is the what is zombie ice and this is the value addition for the arctic related to arctic question if come in the upsc means examination so you can read here zombie eyes and it is important for means as well as prelims perspective a zombie or doomed ice is ice that is still attached to thicker area of ice but is no longer getting fed by those larger glaciers because 
parent glaciers are getting less replenishing snow so you can remember this without replenishment zombie ice is melting from climate change and will inevitably reach seas so you can remember this is the ice cap and this is the ice and it will melting slowly and increasing the level of the sea instead of instead of attaching this so you can remember okay and what is the tipping points arctic sea ice is one of the tipping point tipping points are threshold where a tiny change would push a system into a completely new state there are nine tipping points where changing climate could push parts of the earth system into abrupt and irreversible change so you can refer this these are the tipping points such as amazon rainforest frequent drops arctic sea ice massive losses atlantic circulation a slow down since 1950s boreal forest or taiga forest increase in fires like zombie fires coral reef mass die offs greenland ice sheet ice loss accelerating and permafrost melting west antarctic ice sheet ice loss accelerating wilkes basin east antarctica ice loss accelerating so you can remember next is extreme weather events extreme weather events extreme weather includes unexpected unusual unpredictable severe or unseasonal weather weather at the extremes of the historical distribution the range that has been seen in the past so you can remember it is what is extreme weather vary from place to place in an absolute sense and human induced climate change has likely increased the frequency and intensity of extreme events since pre industrial times including heat waves extreme precipitation events marine heat waves etc six assessment report of the ipcc and various examples of extreme weather events such as health uh, heat waves and forest fire in usa heat waves in india and pakistan and bush fire in australia so you can remember and status of weather events in india more than 80% of india's population lives in districts highly vulnerable to extreme hydrometeorological disaster according to environment and water climate vulnerability index the southern zone of india is the most vulnerable 2022 witnessed a higher number of human casualties in india due to extreme weather events in 3 years according to annual statement on climate of india 2022 and ex- impact of extreme weather events heightened risk of irreversible loss of ecosystems and biodiversity positive feedback to the climate change negative environmental effects such as droughts desertification flooding and coastal erosion etc reduced food and weather uh, water security protracted prolonged and repeat, repeated displacement an impact on physical and mental health and livelihoods economic losses damage to infrastructure as well as industrial sectors and what are the steps taken in india to tackle the extreme weather events council on energy environment and weather carried a first of its kind district level climate vulnerability assessment to map regions vulnerable to extreme climate guidelines and action plans for extreme events by national disaster management authority early warning systems for floods and cyclones by the national disaster response authority and enhancement of 
intended nationally determined contribution so remember this on constraints in tackling the weather events lack of preparedness one third of the world's people are still not covered by early warning systems commitment gap current global commitments would lead to global warming in the range of 1.8 to 2.4 degrees celsius and difficult to predict due to uncertainty and complexity of extreme events and equal impact both at national and international level based on socio economic demographic and health related differences and other factors a lack of funding to deal with consequences and what are the way forward to enhance the protection from the weather events extreme weather events enhancing climate commitments integrating extreme weather risk management and adaptation into all social economic and environmental policy domains early warning and response systems like heat health action plan extending risk communication between decision makers and local citizens bridging financial gaps through innovative risk financing instruments like micro insurance insurance reinsurance etc climate proofing of infrastructure and enhancing institutional capacity building and ecosystem based resources so keep this in mind at what extreme weather events impacting india as well as the world and what is the sea level rise present status of sea level rise the sea level rose 4.5 mm per year on average between 2013 and 2022 the higher ever i guess ever since last decade india china bangladesh and netherlands face the highest threat of sea level rise globally what are the causes of sea level rise that is global warming melting of ice sheets glaciers and caps changes in net storage of territorial fresh water such as ground water or river extraction sinking of land in coastal regions natural factors such as tectonic movements and changes in ocean currents what are the concerns related to sea level rise environmental impacts like increased intensity of storm surges loss of habitat impacts on coastal ecosystems such as threat to mangrove and coral reefs in the marine protected areas and economic impacts like the threat to coastal infrastructure salt water intrusion in the ground water supplies etc social impacts like large scale displacement of people in coastal areas and increasing pollution potential maritime disputes due to change in the baselines from which most maritime zones defined under United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea (UN) clause are measured. What are the steps taken by India to tackle the sea level rise? Integrated Coastal Zone Management Project and Coastal Regulation Zone Notification 2019 to conserve and protect coastal stretches for coastal management. Airborne lidar terrain mapping elevation data launched by the INQUIS. for the reduction of marine reduction of tsunami warning system an indian tsunami early warning system launched by the inquis coastal management information system and national disaster management authority has issued several disaster specific guidelines for managing extreme weather related disasters what are the way forward to protect the sea level rise protect reduce the likelihood of the hazard build or maintain a hard defenses beach nourishment dune restoration and accommodate reduce vulnerability change building codes of codes and design standards along coastlines avoidance and plan retreat reduce exposure prevent new development in vulnerable zone 
एंड फिजिकल रियलोकेशन ऑफ पीपल एंड क्रिटिकल असेट्स कीप दिस इन माइंड नेक्स्ट इज ओजोन होल वट इज द कंटेक्सट द हाई जोन कंसनट्रेशन रीजन इन द स्टेटोस्पियर प्रोटेक्टिंग लाइफ ऑन अर्थ बाई एब्जॉर्बिंग हार्मफुल अल्ट्रावल रेडिएशन फ्राम द सन थैट्स अबाउट आर्कटिक होल द फर्स्ट नोटिफाइड इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन आकर्स ड्यूरिंग स्प्रिंग आर्कटिक वर्टेक्स प्रिवेंट्स कोल्ड एयर फ्राम एस्केलेटिंग रीजन दिस केस द कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ ओजोन डिप्लीटिंग सब्सटेंसेस हाई इन रीजन इनक्रीज कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ ओजोन डिप्लीटिंग सब्सटेंसेस लीडिंग टू ओजोन डिप्लीसन इट अकर्स ड्यू टू पोलर आर्कटिक वर्टेक्स एंड कॉजेज ऑफ ओजोन होल हाई मिशन ऑफ ओजोन डिप्लीटिंग सब्सटेंसेस मैन मेड केमिकल्स लाइक क्लोरोफ्लोरोकार्बन्स हेलोन्स मेथाइल ब्रोमाइड एक्सेट्रा हैविंग हाई ओजोन डिप्लीटिंग पोटेंशियल फॉर्मेशन ऑफ पोलर स्ट्रेटोस्पेरिक क्लाउड्स हाई एल्टीट्यूड क्लाउड्स दैट फैसिलिटेड कंडीशन फॉर डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ ओजोन होल एंड पोलर स्ट्रेटोस्पेरिक क्लाउड्स विच आर मेकिंग इन द स्ट्रेटोस्फियर नियर द अंटार्कटिक रीजन and collecting more harmful gases to reduce the ozone from the antarctic region so keep this in mind an impact of ozone layer depletion to increases the risk of skin cancer and cataracts weakness weakens human immune systems decreases agricultural productivity affects terrestrial and aquatic biogeochemical cycles etc okay next is thinning of the ozone layer confirmed in 1985 through the formation of the ozone hole over the arctic an antarctic hole develops in august and dissipates in the late november 2022 first adopted in 1985 during the paris vienna convention the frozen crystals that make up polar stratospheric clouds provide a surface for a, a reaction that free chlorine atoms in the antarctic atmosphere and what are the causes and cause and effect what is the cause and effect of ozone layer depletion first step is making the chlorofluorocarbon emissions reach the ozone layer near the antarctica and in step 2 the cfcs are broken down by the sun's ultraviolet rays releasing chlorine atoms into the ozone layer and this chlorine atoms break down the ozone molecules and break down into the oxygen and nascent oxygen and break down the ozone layer okay in the step 4 more ultraviolet rays reach the earth threatening human health causing cancer as well as skin cancer and other communicable diseases and the montreal protocol what is the context as per recently published ozone the recovery assessment report 2022 the ozone layer is on track to recover within decades as ods are phased out what is ods the ozone depletion substances key findings of the report thickness of the ozone layer expected to return to 1980 values around 200 2066 in antarctica and 2000 around 2045 in the arctic region this slow but steady progress over the past 3 decades was achieved by the montreal protocol so keep this in mind and the study suggests that decline in 
ozone depletion substance emissions due to the compliance with the Montreal Protocol avoids global warming of approximately 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius by mid-century. And what is the Montreal Protocol 1987? You can remember this is the, the static portion. Okay, so read this Montreal Protocol from your notes or your standard book. Indian India and Montreal Protocol. India became party to Montreal Protocol. Okay, empowering STR committee and ozone cell national ozone unit and approved the ratification of Kigali Agreement to Montreal Protocol in 2021. Other steps for photo protection of ozone. They successfully achieved a complete phase out of hydrochlorofluorocarbons 141 biota used in the manufacturing of foam india action coalition uh, cooling action plan to reduce the consumption of ozone depleting substances in cooling equipment key challenges highlighted by the report difficulties in to taking action against unreported emissions due to gaps in observation and monitoring networks for compounds like CFC 11, CFC 12. Unexplained emissions have been identified for others. Ozone depleting substances such as CFC 13 and so on. Disparity in ozone recovery. They recovered better in upper atmosphere than middle and lower static, uh, stratospheric zones. Gaps in regional at uh, atmosphere, atmospheric monitoring due to lack of monitoring stations, geoengineering techniques, stratospheric aerosol injection has hinted towards deepening of the Antarctic ozone hole and delay in the ozone recovery. What is the way forward? There is elimination of emission of methyl bromide, reduction in anthropogenic N2O emissions, emissions of Anthropogenic very short lived chlorine substances dominated by chloro dichloromethane uh, need to be phased out. Reductions in the future emissions of CFC and hydrofluorofluorocarbons requires proper assessment and monitoring of regional gaps. So keep this in mind. What is the mitigation? What is the mitigation? It refers to efforts to reduce the prevent emission of greenhouse gases and emission trends greenhouse gas emissions were 54% higher in 2019 and this mitigation is a static part of your syllabus so you can go through and read that from your standard book as well as from your notes next is carbon market and trading article 6 of the paris climate in the sixth assessment report of the climate Paris Agreement. Okay, so list of 13 activities greenhouse gas mitigation activities. These are renewable energy with storage, solar, thermal power, offshore wind, green hydrogen, compressed biogas, tidal energy, ocean thermal energy, etc., and alternate materials. Green ammonia process of making ammonia is 100% renewable and carbon free. And removal activities, carbon capture, utilization, and storage. So these are the 13 activities of the sixth assessment report of the Paris Agreement. So you can remember. Okay, sixth assessment report is in news that you can go through your part of the syllabus I read that yeah and significance of article 6 allows countries to well uh, voluntary voluntarily cooperative with each other to achieve emissions reduction targets set out in their NDCs use of use for funding adaptation efforts in developing countries promotes higher ambition in countries mitigation and adaptation actions 
and promotes environmental integrity, provides a means of incorporating climate commitments by private sector in the wider UN process. Next is continuous issues regarding Article 6 of Paris Agreement. Over reliance on offsetting emissions can take away attention from mitigation efforts towards the MBC a target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Highly technical and slow progress of finalization of rules. Several terms like non market approach, carbon removals, etc., are not well defined and can be interpreted differently for own convenience. Disagreements among countries related to multiple issues, such as whether Article 6.4 activities could include emission avoidance and trade off Article 6 emission reductions. Okay, so keep this in mind. What are the outcomes of COP27 of Article 6 Assessment Report of Paris Agreement? UNFCCC Secretariat requested to develop a test version of the tracking infrastructure for monitoring carbon credits, the centralized accounting and the reporting platforms. The outlines for submission of Article 6 related information were adopted. Some issues like whether Article 6.4 activities could include emission avoidance and conservation enhancement activities were postponed to future conferences. What is carbon credit and carbon market? So this is important for your prelims examination. Remember this, the carbon market. Carbon markets are a tool for putting a price on carbon emissions. They establish trading systems where carbon credits are Carbon credits can be brought and sold. Okay, so remember this. Types of carbon markets, compliance market and voluntary markets. Under compliance markets created because of any national, regional and or international policy or regulatory requirements. Mostly operate under a principle called CAP and trade example European Union emissions trading systems and voluntary markets under this the corporations private individuals and others buy carbon credits on voluntary basis example in aviation sector airlines may purchase carbon credit to offset the carbon footprints this is the carbon market so you can remember this okay Rather way forward given under the article 6 of the Paris agreement of the climate Paris climate agreement going beyond offsetting carbon market system should aim to accelerate just transition facilitate by technological and financial sharing mechanism focused towards reducing overall greenhouse gas emissions accelerating negotiations around contentious issues using Innovative mechanisms like multilateral platforms, transparency mechanisms can be set up to verify reports and their credibility. And key terminologies should be defined appropriately to avoid uh, misinterpretation. Countries can vulnerability, uh, voluntarily give up carbon credits generated by corporate mechanisms. Global collaboration for emission tackling. For example, World Meteorological Organization has launched the global greenhouse gas monitoring infrastructure to support the UNFCCC processes including global stock stock take in hand transparency frameworks national inventories etc what are the carbon credit trading schemes 2023 so this is important okay so what is the country the carbon credit trading scheme 2023 was notified by the central government in consultation with the bureau of energy efficiency more on news it was notified in exercise of the power conferred by section 14 of the energy conservation act 2001 energy conservation amendment act 2022 had empowered central government to specify a carbon credit trading schemes And what is the significance of the scheme? Set up a single carbon market mechanism at the national level would which reduce transaction costs, improve liquidity, enhance a common understanding and 
स्टीम लाइन द काउंटिंग एंड वेरिफिकेशन प्रोसीजर्स अलाइनमेंट विद आर्टिकल सिक्स ऑफ द पेरिस एग्रीमेंट कंट्रीब्यूशन टू सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट एंड ग्रेजुअल डी कार्बनाइजेशन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी बाई इनेबलिंग एक्टिव एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ द प्राइवेट सेक्टर इन ऑल पोटेंशियल सेक्टर्स प्रमोट ट्रांसपेरेंसी इन द इंस्टीट्यूशनल एंड फाइनेंशियल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर कार्बन मार्केट ट्रांजेक्शन कीप दिस इन माइंड वॉट आर द की फीचर्स ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट ट्रेडिंग स्कीम्स स्पेसिफाई द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द इंडियन कार्बन मार्केट फॉर बोथ वॉलेंटरी ट्रेडिंग एंड कंप्लाइंस क्रिएशन ऑफ एक्रेडिटेड कार्बन वेरीफिकेशन एजेंसीज टू कैरी आउट वेरीफिकेशन एक्टिविटीज अंडर द स्कीम कंप्लाइंस मैकेनिज्म मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर विल डिसाइड सेक्टर्स एंड ऑब्लीगेटेड एंटिटीज टू बी कवर्ड अंडर द कंप्लाइंस मैकेनिज्म ऑब्लीगेटेड एंटिटीज विल बी रिक्वायर टू अचीव ग्रीन हाउस गैस एमिशन इंटेंसिटी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द टारगेट्स एज मे बी नोटिफाइड बाई द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज अन अचीव एनी अदर टारगेट सच एज यूज ऑफ नॉन फॉसिल एनर्जी कंजम्पन और स्पेसिफिक एनर्जी कंजम्पन एज मे बी नोटिफाइड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर एंड इस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशनल स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द स्कीम न्यू नेशनल स्टीयरिंग कमिटी फॉर इंडियन कार्बन मार्केट विद सेक्रेटरी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर एज इट्स एक्स ऑफिसियर चेयरमैन वाट आर द फंक्शन गवर्नेंस ऑफ द इंडियन कार्बन मार्केट एंड मॉनिटरिंग एंड प्रोवाइडिंग डायरेक्ट ओवर साइट ऑफ इट्स फंक्शनिंग एंड मेक रिकमेंडेशन टू ब्यूरो ऑफ इनर्जी एफिशियंसी इज रिगार्ड सेवरल आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द इंडियन कार्बन मार्केट सच एज प्रोसीजर्स फॉर इट्स इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइजेशन रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन फॉर इट्स फंडिंग फंक्शनिंग ग्रीन हाउस गैस टारगेट्स फॉर ऑब्लीगेटेड एंटिटीज इशू ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट सर्टिफिकेट एंड प्रोसेस और कंडीशन फॉर दियर क्रेडिटिंग पीरियड और रिन्यूअल और एक्सपायरी गाइडलाइंस रिगार्डिंग ट्रेडिंग ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट सर्टिफिकेट आउटसाइड इंडिया एंड ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशियंसी एज एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर अंडर दिस आइडेंटिफाई एंड रिकमेंड सेक्टर्स फॉर इंक्लूजन इन इंडियन कार्बन मार्केट टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर डेवलप ट्रेजेक्ट्री एंड टारगेट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ टन ऑफ कार्बन डाईऑक्साइड एक्टिवेलेंट फॉर द एंटिटीज अंडर कंप्लाइंस मैकेनिज्म इशू ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट सर्टिफिकेट बेस्ड ऑन द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ द एन एस सी आई सी एम एंड अप्रूवल ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट डेवलप मार्केट स्टेबिलिटी मैकेनिज्म फॉर कार्बन क्रेडिट्स एक्डिट द एजेंसी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द अप्रूवल अप्रूव प्रोसीजर फॉर ए सी बी ए एंड डेवलप प्रोसेस एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ आई सी एम अंडरटेक कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एक्टिविटीज फॉर द स्टेक होल्डर्स सो के डिजन माइंड एंड सेंट्रल एनर्जी रेगुलेटरी कमीशन दट इज सी ई आर सी एज द रेगुलेटर फॉर द ट्रेडिंग एक्टिविटीज अंडर दिस सी आर सी द रेगुलेट मैटर्स रिलेटेड टू रिलेटिंग टू ट्रेडिंग ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट सर्टिफिकेट सेफ गार्ड इंटरेस्ट ऑफ बोथ सेलर्स एंड बायर्स टेक नेसेसरी प्रिवेंटिव एंड करेक्टिव एक्शंस टू प्रिवेंट फ्रॉड और मिसट्रस्ट रजिस्टर द पावर एक्सचेंजेस एंड अप्रूव द कार्बन क्रेडिट सर्टिफिकेट ट्रेडिंग and last is grid controller of india limited as the registry under this function as meta registry for india registration of obligated or non obligated entities maintenance of secure database and records of all transactions establishing linkages with other national or international registries so keep this in mind and india's experience with the carbon markets while india does not have explicit carbon market it has instruments that closely resemble carbon markets and clean development mechanisms under this the created uh, under this created by the kyoto protocol certified certified emission reductions equivalent to the mitigation of the ton of carbon dioxide emission implemented by national Clean Development Mechanism Authority under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. What is the scheme? 
of renewable energy certificate a market based instrument to promote renewable energy and facilitate compliance of renewable purchase obligations value of renewable energy certificate is equivalent to 1 million 1 megawatt of electricity renewable energy certificate would be exchanged on the certified emission reductions reduction commission approved power exchanges and through electricity traders and regulated by certified emission reduction commission and energy saving certificates under perform achieve and trade scheme under this scheme aim set reducing specific energy consumption that is energy use per unit of production for designated consumers in energy intensity sectors and excess energy savings are converted into tradable as such certificates that are traded at india energy exchange and power exchange india limited one escalt certificate equal to one metric ton of oil equivalent and implemented by bureau of energy efficiency under ministry of power so keep this in mind what are the challenges to carbon markets in india pat and rsc scheme do not state their certificates metric unit in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent India's industry stakeholders do not have deep experience of the cap and track market and multiple sectoral market instruments fragments the scale of the domestic energy market and prevent cross linkages between pat and rec scheme peak enforceability on distribution companies or tiscom poor market transparency concern about greenwashing challenging in meeting obligation for designated consumers due to shortage of renewable sources of power so keep this in mind we forward examination of present trade of various environmental instruments to observe trading targets calibration and effective management of demand and supply of instruments developing a provision for tangibility of the unit trading to emission reduction may attract voluntary buyers and lead to international participation in the market so keep this in mind high energy conservation amendment act 2022 this is the amendment act of energy conservation act suppose the video and you can go through this energy conservation act okay and next is carbon border adjustment mechanism European Union has formally notified the implementation of carbon border adjustment mechanism at the WTO members of the Committee on Trade and Environment about carbon border adjustment mechanism it is a plan to tax carbon intensive products such as iron and steel cement fertilizer aluminum electricity and hydrogen from 2026 it is also known as carbon border tax or a carbon leakage instrument it is a part of carbon market reforms under european union's fit for 55 package so keep this in mind this is the fact about carbon border adjustment mechanism so what is the process that supplier like india transport is goods with the carbon related goods to the european union market and here stop european union customs in the border of european union countries and non european union member certified to import the import goods of the european union and here european union buyer can be buy goods from non european 
union member and carbon uh, there is European Union supplier to the carbon border registration mechanism not applicable on European Union originating goods so including goods originating from Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland so these are because of the, these are countries are European Union members and India's position and other concerns related to carbon border adjustment mechanism discriminatory as it will ramp up prices of India's goods in Europe and shrink, shrink demand huge impact on Indian exports to the European Union against the common but differential responsibilities and respective capabilities will cause market distortion along with aggravating the already widened trust deficit amongst parties. Difficulties in measuring carbon prices of goods may violate World Trade Organization rules. Potential economic risks to Global South who struggle the decarbonization their industries. Additional cost will be passed on to the consumers eventually. What are the way forward? Develop standards to measure carbon embedded into India's products. India's Bureau of Energy Efficiency under the Power Ministry is working on such standards. Financial support for developing countries to intro introduce the carbon price and coordinated sub application of carbon taxes and related, related climate change awareness measures should be given more priority. Bilateral resolution with European Union alongside preparing to set up its own carbon trading systems and other measures adopted by the European Union. The Social Climate Fund will support people in Europe with the cost of transition, reforming emission trading systems. European industries and energy companies, companies should cut emissions by 62% by 2030 compared to 2005 levels compared to previous targets of 43% and what are the significance of carbon border adjustment mechanisms address carbon leakage use issue encourages the more rapid application of renewable technologies incentivizes non-european union countries to increase their climate ambition ensure global climate efforts not undermined due to carbon leakages and last is unholding the polluter phase principle so these are the significance of carbon border adjustment mechanism and next is carbon finance what is the context discussion surrounding climate finance formed an important part of at the UN climate change conference COP27 thermal safe Egypt and about climate finance according to UNFCCC climate finance is local national or transnational funding from public private and alternative sources that seek to support climate change mitigation and adaptation actions a scale of finance needed a global transformation to a low carbon economy is expected to require investment of at least US dollar 4 to 6 trillion per year and sources of climate finance there are financial mechanisms established under international agreements or conventions like UNFCCC, UNCCD etc. Loans or grants from multilateral development banks and international financial institutions like World Bank, Asian Development Bank allocations for national governments, carbon pricing instruments, carbon market approach like emissions trading scheme, carbon emissions tax, etc. Private finance through instruments like green bonds, green deposits, etc. Okay. Next is the significance of climate finance. Just transition including transformation of low carbon energy systems to 
addressing loss and damage and responding to growing vulnerability of developing countries to climate change restoring the damage to natural uh, capital and biodiversity financial mechanisms established for climate finance under UNFCCC and related agreements so funds managed by global environment facility under this the special climate change fund established in 2001 least developed countries fund and adaptation fund under adaptation fund established in 2001 to finance concrete adaptation projects and programs in developing countries parties to the Kyoto protocol in 2005 receives 5% share of proceeds from new market based UNFCCC mechanism established by article 6.4 of the Paris agreement and green climate fund under green climate fund a green climate fund established in co 16 in 2010 Green Green Climate Fund developed was initiated by the developed countries pledged to mobilize US dollar hundred billion per year by twenty twenty to twenty twenty to support developing countries raise and realize their nationally determined contribution ambitions towards low emissions, climate resilient pathways. Let's keep this in mind. And climate finance and India. India's climate finance needs Cumulative investments of up to 6 to 8 trillion US dollars required during 2015 to 30 to implement the actions required to transform the current energy systems in India. India needs around US dollar 10 trillion to achieve net zero by 2070 and steps taken to mobilize climate finance. The National Adaptation Fund for Climate Change was established in August 2015 during Paris Agreement. Priority sector lending two renewable energy projects, is ones of green deposits and green bonds. India's first green bond was issued by US Bank in 2015. Remember this. Here is factual information. And sustainable finance groups was set up under RBI. RBI joined a new, uh, network for greening of financial systems. Union Budget 2022-23 announced sovereign green bond for green infrastructural investment. One way forward is increase the efficiency of financial markets, set up climate clubs and cross-border financial initiatives like just transition partnerships, transformation of uh, multilateral development banks and international financial institutions by reforming operational practices and priorities aligning and scaling up funding and double availability of low cost and debt free finance from developed countries by 2025 20, from 2019 levels creating common language and standards for climate finance to bring coherence enhance financing and venues for adopting such as through innovative instruments like special branch rights voluntary carbon markets and challenges faced by developing countries because of the climate financing. Highly complex and lack of harmonization in climate finance architecture, shortage grant based financing, low awareness, inadequate consideration of the unique climate and fiscal vulnerabilities in eligibility criteria, and existing debt burden limited technical and human resources and slow burdens and inefficient processes so keep this in mind these are the challenges faced by developing countries in climate financing and a concept of debt for climate swaps so pause the video and read this thoroughly because not need much information grab in mind okay so you cannot remember everything so you can go through one or two times and then go next that is sovereign green bond framework 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस अप्रूव इंडिया फर्स्ट सॉवरिन ग्रीन बॉन्ड फ्रेमवर्क वट इज द कंटेक्सट अबाउट ग्रीन बॉन्ड वट इज ग्रीन बॉन्ड अ ग्रीन बॉन्ड इज अ फिक्स इनकम इंस्ट्रूमेंट डिजाइन टू सपोर्ट स्पेसिफिक क्लाइमेट रिलेटेड और इन्वायरमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स सॉवरिन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स आर इशूड बाई द गवर्नमेंट अर्लियर यूनियन बजट ट्वेंटी the issuance of sovereign green bonds what is the framework a green project classification is based on the principles like encourages energy efficiency reduces carbon and greenhouse gas emissions eligible projects under sovereign green bond framework projects of renewable energy energy efficiency green transportation climate change adaptation sustainable water and waste management pollution prevention and control green buildings and biodiversity conservation green bond excludes nuclear power generation landfill projects direct waste incineration hydropower plants larger than 25 megawatt and it include small hydropower plant which are less than which creates less than 25 megawatt so keep this in mind and green finance working committee constituted to validate key decisions on is one of sovereign green bonds proceeds will be deposited with consolidated fund of india issue related to green bond in india green washing due to eligibility of wide range of projects lack of robust impact assessment framework to quantify environmental outcomes liquidity issues for investors as it is still a small market what are the way forward cover all the projects which are reducing environmental degradation such as nuclear power generation and generate public awareness about green bonds as investment incentivize provide private investment in green projects enhance participation of state and local self government so steps taken and step taken in india to promote green bonds In 2017, SEBI had brought disclose disclosure norms for green bonds, where by issuer will have to make disclosure about environmental activity objective objectives of issue of such securities. An RBI issued sovereign green bonds in two tranches of rupees eight thousand crore. India's first green bond was issued by Yes Bank Limited in 2013. So keep this in mind. And what are the what is the carbon capture utilization and storage what is the context recently niti ayog released the report titled carbon capture utilization and storage policy framework and its deployment mechanisms in india carbon capture utilization and storage carbon carbon capture utilization and storage encompasses technologies to remove co2 from flue gas and the atmospheric followed atmosphere followed by recycling the co2 for utilization and determining safe and permanent storage options so keep this in mind need of ccus in india to achieve net zero target generation of green jobs ensure sustainable development and growth in india particularly for production of clean products and energy and enable circular economy by covering the captured co2 to value added products like urea polymers etc with ready markets in the in india this contributing thus contributing to the circular economy and boost oil industry as the process of injecting carbon dioxide into unorganized oil underground oil reservoirs can boost production so these are uh, need of ccu in india different carbon capture technologies for different applications chemical solvent technology that preferred where when dealing with gas streams that are lean in co2 and have relatively lower pressures such as flue gas streams from power plants and physical solvent technology the work well on gas streams with relatively higher co2 concentration and pleasure 
and pressure such as pre-combustion capture in case of gasification projects and absorption technology suitable for gas steams with moderate to high pressure and moderate CO2 concentration such as steam methane reforming flue gas and cryogenic separation preferred in cases where cost of power is low and concerns associated with CCU, CCUS, high capital investment, and difficult to transport, high cost damage to pipeline as the compressed fluid rapidly expands to a gas, lack of CO2 transport and storage sites near industries, NIBMI, NIMBY, not in my backyard, that is. Rejecting large projects such as projects being built near them because of the perceived risks, etc. CCUS projects are not currently regulated by a uniform standard. Lack of technology transfer by developed countries. Lack of adequate geological information for risk mitigation. What are the way forward? Develop a geological CO2 storage atlas to map the source as well as the storage sites, tax incentives for establishing financing and funding mechanisms for CCUS projects, promote environmental and social justify justice by contribute distributing economic value created by CCUS, promoting low carbon products by encouraging procurement for CCUS equipped plants, accelerate technology transfer by developed countries, risk mitigation through Environmental Impact Assessment and SIA Promotion of R&D in CO2 Utilization Technologies and New Products and Applications Investing in Designing New Transportation Infrastructure So keep this in mind Okay And Initiatives for CCUS in India National Center for Excellence Mission Innovation Challenge on CCU aims to enable near zero CO near zero CO2 emissions from power plants and carbon intensive industries, accelerating CCS technologies. Initiative aims to facilitate R and D and innovation that can lead to development of safe and cost effective CCUS technologies. So keep this in mind. And low carbon technology. The term given to technologies that emit low levels of CO2 emissions or no net CO2 emissions. Examples for low carbon technology include increasing utilization ratio of available resources, heat pumps, combined heat and power, making use of inevitable emissions or converting desired products from renewable sources, photovoltaic, geothermal heating, hydrogen, etc. So keep this in mind. Next is methane emission. What is the context about methane emission? Recently, Global Methane Assessment 2030 baseline report was released by Climate and Clean Energy Coalition and United Nations Environment Program. So keep this in mind that United Nations Environment Program launched methane, methane emission under the baseline report, Global Methane Assessment report launched by United Nations Environment Program. What is the methane? Powerful greenhouse gas, 20 years lifetime with a global warming potential more than 80 times than that of the carbon dioxide. But lower time period less than the but lower time period than the carbon dioxide responsible for more than 25% of the warming warming responsible for around half of the growth of tropospheric ozone formation. India is among the top 5 methane emitters in the world. Wetlands are the most prominent methane emitter followed by fossil fuel extraction, livestock and landfill and agricultural waste. Keep this in mind. Next is data bank methane emission. Amount of methane in the atmosphere in is to 60% of pre-industrial levels. 2021 saw the largest annual increase recorded. 
human driven methane emissions are responsible for for nearly 45 percent of current net warming currently available targeted methane uh, measures could reduce emissions by as much as 45 percent by 2030 what are the initiatives for reducing methane emissions switching to direct seeded rice systems crop diversification program for grooming alternate crops like pulses while seeds maize cotton and agroforestry gobar initiative gobar gobardhan initiative gobardhan gobar means galvanizing organic bio agro resources dhan scheme national livestock mission india greenhouse gas program build a comprehensive measurement and management strategy to reduce emissions global initiatives such as global methane pledge 2021 under cop during cop 26 glasgow methane alert and response system that is mars launched at cop 27 need for need to curb methane emissions to improve air quality to reduce adverse health impacts that is prevent premature deaths asthma cardiovascular disease etc to enhance crop yields and to decrease global warming rate so keep this in mind what is way forward implement policies to cover all three main anthropogenic sectors technologies like gas mapping lidar light detection and raising can be used to detect methane and thus curb emissions and mapping hot spots through global methane emitters monitoring tools along with satellite aerial surveys and drones catalyzing greater actions by engagement of policy makers industries ngos etc capture and use methane as fuel what are the sector specific interventions agriculture these are the facts about generation of methane emissions under agriculture the emissions can be reduced through improve manure management and animal feed quality apply intermittent aeration of continuously flooded rice fields improve animal health and husbandry by combining herd and health management nutrition and feeding management strategies introduce selective breeding to reduce emission intensity and increase production promote farm scale anaerobic digestion to control methane emissions from livestock and fossil fuels carry out pre mining degasification and recovery and oxidation of methane from ventilation air from coal mines reduce leakage from long distance gas transmission and distribution pipeline extend the recovery and utilization from gas and oil production require and use gas and fugitive emissions during oil and natural gas pollution and waste management separate and treat biodegradable municipal waste and turn it into compost or bioenergy upgrade wa- uh, waste water treatment with gas recovery and overflow control and divest divert organic waste collect capture and use landfill gas so these are the some initiative to tackle the emission of methane emissions and next is india's cooling sector what is the context the climate investment opportunities in india's cooling sector report was released by the world bank so this is the fact you can remember this highlights of the report by 2020 2030 over 160 to 200 million people across india could be exposed to lethal heat waves annually it is a concern related regarding the india's population by 2030 around 34 million people will face job losses due to heat stress related productivity decline current food loss due to heat during transportation is close to US dollar 13 billion annually and by 2037 demand for cooling is likely to be 8 times more than current levels leading to an expected rise of 
फोर थर्टी फाइव परसेंट इन एरवली ग्रीन हाउस गैस एमिशंस ओवर द नेक्स्ट टू डिकेड्स एंड वाट आर द रिकमेंडेशन फॉर इंडियाज कूलिंग सेक्टर अडोप्टिंग क्लाइमेट रेस्पॉन्सिव कूलिंग टेक्निक्स एज ए नॉर्म इन बोथ प्राइवेट एंड गवर्नमेंट फंडेड कंस्ट्रक्शन इन्वेस्टिंग इन प्री कूलिंग एंड रेफ्रिजरेटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट कैन हेल्प इंक्रीज फूड लॉस बाई अबाउट सेवेंटी सिक्स परसेंट एंड रिड्यूस कार्बन एमिशंस बाई सिक्सटीन परसेंट प्रपोज अ रोड मैप टू सपोर्ट इंडिया कूलिंग एक्शन प्लान विद न्यू इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन थ्री मेजर सेक्टर्स बिल्डिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन कोल्ड स्टेंस एंड रिफ्रिजरेंट्स इम्प्रूवमेंट्स इन सर्विसिंग मेंटेनेंस एंड डिस्पोजल ऑफ इक्वल एंड दैट यूज हाइड्रोफ्लोरोकार्बन एंड वाट आर द चैलेंजेस इन कूलिंग सेक्टर फॉर इंडिया फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ इंडिया पीक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी डिमांड इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टी इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कम फ्राम स्पेस कूलिंग अलॉन एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज विल लीड टू सेफ्स इन स्पेसिव टेम्पोरल ट्रेंड ट्रेंड ऑफ हीट वेव इवेंट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड इंडिया एक्सेस टू कूलिंग अक्रॉस सेक्टर्स रिमेन्स लो लो पर कैपिटा एनुअल एनर्जी कंजम्पन ऑफ सिक्सटी नाइन पर आवर फॉर स्पेस कूलिंग कंपेयर्ड विद द ग्लोबल एवरेज ऑफ टू सेवेंटी टू किलो वॉट पर आवर ओके सो कीप दिस इन माइंड सो वॉट इज द इंडिया कूलिंग एक्शन प्लान launched in 2019 to provide sustainable cooling measures across various sectors like indoor cooling in buildings cold chain and refrigeration in agriculture and pharmaceuticals air conditioning passengers transport as drive six to reduce cooling demand across sectors by 20% to 25% by 2037 38 reduce refrigerant demand by 25% to 30% by 2037 38 recognize cooling and related areas as a thrust area of research recognize cooling and related areas as a thrust area of research under national and science and technology national science and tech program so this is the india cooling action plan and next is air pollution so here i will end this lecture so it is a very broad topics covered in environment and ecology okay so here i will end the video so thank you for watching and have a good day